So we are here today with Mark Kaufman, partner at Ramon PC Law Firm, who has specialized in intellectual property strategy, and in particular, the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. So thank you so much for being with us today, Mark. My pleasure. We're going to talk a little bit about patents in the blockchain space. Now, there is a growing number of patents being issued in this space. Tell us a little bit about the data you're seeing and some of the risks that might be coming from that. Sure. So over the past several years, we've seen actually what appears to be an exponential increase in filings from a handful in uh, 2014 to several thousand uh, over the last couple of years. And, and that looks to increase. And of course, with that increase in patent filings, will eventually be an increase in granted patents and possibly in uh, innovators and owners of patents looking to uh, monetize their patents in some way or possibly uh, create exclusive markets by excluding others. So it's very possible that innovators in the space over the coming years may see pushback through patent assertions or even patent litigation. Now this is a very new technology though, it's still of course developing but you've mentioned that uh, it might be lear have learned some of the lessons of tech revolutions past. So, for example, we saw a great deal of patent litigation uh, with the rise of mobile phones and the dot-com boom with semiconductors. So mm -hmm. what might companies in the tech field and, and, and blockchain have learned from those, uh, those patent wars? And how might that be affecting what they're thinking of now as, and in the, in the coming months as far as being defensive about those patents? Well, I think that in the mobile phone space is a very good example. I think that the excessive patent litigation, in my mind, uh, and excessive licensing fees that are being paid yearly for patents uh, are something that, that players in the blockchain ecosystem want to avoid. And uh, of course, patent owners deserve to be compensated for their innovation, but patent litigation is probably the most inefficient way to get that compensation that any of us could imagine. So I think that the players in the space uh, should and will look at, at opportunities to collaborate with an industry-wide patent strategy. And this can be anything from uh, what are known as innovator agreements, where uh, companies unilaterally agree not to assert their patents in, in certain ways, uh, to patent pools, where uh, a, a uh, critical mass of the patents are grouped into one entity and are able to be licensed at a reasonable uh, and in a non-discriminatory manner by anybody who wants to participate in the technology. Right, and there's, there's some newer players entering the market that are considering making these pools, and there's some uh, older pools that are entering into this space as well that have that experience. There are, uh, as an example, I just recently learned that MPEG LA, uh, they are a patent pool organization. Uh, they've been around about uh, 30 years, I believe, and have done patent pools in various technology spaces in the past. They are, uh, have begun to investigate the potential for a patent pool related to blockchain technology. Is there anything else that you're expecting about how these pools are going to develop that might be different than the way pools developed in the past or how the, the participants or, for example, uh, the difference between um, the proprietary, uh, proprietary coding use in the space versus open source? Yeah, so th there are several issues that I think uh, make it a particular challenge to develop a pool in this space. Uh, number one, you mentioned open source. There's, a, as you know, a, a huge open source ethos within the blockchain community. Uh, but for various reasons, patent protection is not antithetical to open source. And in fact, they can be very complementary. But there's a, a cultural issue there. Uh, the distributed nature of the technology, you know, by definition, uh, makes it difficult to enforce patents and to meter where the actual infringement is occurring, for example. Uh, just as, as a quick example, in the, the uh, CD-ROM pool, there was a, a fixed fee per CD disc and per CD player, like a dollar per player, 50 cents per disc, something like that. Very easy to meter. You make a disc, you pay your 50 cents. With blockchain technology, it's not going to be that simple, uh, how to meter it, how to set up the royalty rates. Uh, the, the other complexity that comes to mind are the diversity of the players in the space. There are uh, large financial institutions, the legacy technology companies, uh, new fintech startups, and really everything in between who are not only participating in the space, but obtaining patents. 
And so getting those groups together to create a pool will be a challenge, but I think one that's well worth investing. And, but it could also be a double-edged sword there uh, if you have so much collaboration, for example, uh, going on between different players on a blockchain, perhaps that might make them want to pool if it's difficult to enforce those patents. I, I think that's true. I think that, uh, again, the, the, the collaborative nature of the technology and the culture of the space would certainly, want, uh, would certainly motivate the players to create some kind of arrangement where uh, the, the IP can be obtained in a non-confrontational, non-litigation manner. So I, th I think there is uh, a huge upside reward uh, to the players getting together and creating some kind of strategy that, number one, allows innovators and patent owners to be rewarded for their work, of course, while not hindering innovation. Well, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. Sure, my pleasure. Thank you.